Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, September 22nd. I'm your host, Tom Orr. The Notre Dame game is tomorrow. The game against Michigan in 64 days. On yesterday's show, we talked to Ross Fulton about the Ohio State offense, some of the good things that we saw last week against Western Kentucky, what it might mean moving forward as the Buckeyes face a significantly tougher defense this weekend in Notre Dame. Today, we're flipping the script. We're on the other side of the ball talking about the Buckeye defense. We're going to take a look at some of the stuff they did against Western Kentucky that, that worked pretty well and what it might mean moving forward, as well as take a little bit of a sneak peek at, some, at a little bit of Notre Dame as well. Talk a little bit about what the Buckeyes might do on defense against Notre Dame this week. And of course, we're doing it once again with our buddy Ross Fulton, everybody's foot, smart football friend, our ex's nose guru at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Ross, let's start with a guy who has been pretty much universally good for Ohio State. That is Denzel Burke, he's been really solid in coverage all year for the Buckeyes. This first play is another example of, hey, Denzel Burke, nice coverage, that's good. But you said there's a bunch of other stuff going on here as well that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the um, along with probably like Tyleek Williams, I would say that Denzel Burke and, and David Sinek, you know, have really been probably the brightest spot of this defense or like the most, you know, uh, performing above expectations, if you will. And I mean, you know, think you know and man they 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 play tight they play physical at the line of scrimmage they're making plays on the ball you know I'd include Jordan Hancock and in making play on the ball as well in that um but you know this is this play kind of captures a couple things so <clears throat> the first thing I want to talk about is you know we talked about entering this game how you know what Josh Proctor's role would look like and how this would versus you know a more pass happy offense um and you know whether he could hang handle that situation and what one thing that's jumping out is they're um, very interchangeable or Jim Knowles is being very interchangeable in how he's using the safety so the adjuster or the field safety and bandit boundary safety if you will are um, you know I'd say actually more of the time it's probably Latham Ranson as a deep safety as you like to see in this clip you know anytime a, a offense has puts trips to the field like in this clip three wide receivers or put their formation strength to the field. A lot of times it's uh, Josh Proctor rolling down when they're in single high coverage, which, you know, plays to some of his strengths near the line of scrimmage uh, with Latham Ransom as the deep safety, you know, conversely, like if you get a two by two formation with like a, a slot receiver to the boundary, then they might flip that and, and it'd be ransom down with Proctor um, as, as the deep middle. But so you're seeing them, uh, Again, and, and a couple of clips are going to kind of hit on this here, but like the growth and expansion, if you will, of the Ohio State's past defense and past concepts, um, which, I, you know, as we've discussed, I think is a, is a pretty necessary step. Um, sometimes it fits and starts. They probably are still better in man coverage than they are in terms of matching some, within some of these zones. Uh, but, you know, you can't run man coverage all the time. You, we've seen what happens when you do that. Uh, it becomes easy to pick it apart. And so you're seeing more variety uh, in the zone coverage schemes as well. And the pass defense has been good this year because it hasn't, I mean, the corner play has been good. The safety play has been, you know, it seems like pretty good for the most part, but they've gotten, they got a little help from the linebackers last week as well. Uh, uh, Steel Chambers had a uh, nice play where he dropped into coverage, had an interception uh, from Austin Reed. That was the next play you wanted to talk about here. Yeah. And again, so like one thing that jumped out on me, uh, from this game is that Ohio State ran quite a bit of cover four or quarters, um, such as on this play. They also ran some quarter, quarter, half, which is cover two to one side and, and cover four to the other, both of which, you know, they ran maybe a little bit of cover four last year, but not very much. I don't think that they've run it at all this season. And I'm not sure I've ever seen them run quarter, quarter, half. So again, you know, obviously playing a, a pass happy team, they, they had to expand some of their concepts, but 
again, that's that's something that sort of I I know others have been calling for is that you got, you know they need more variety. And so again, here you see, um, you know, basic quarters concept. Chambers passes off the wide receiver that goes vertical and is able to sit underneath that route and pick it off. Um, you know, you will notice in the play that uh, Jordan Hancock gets a little lost in terms of this, the shallow crosser coming from the other side in terms of whose responsibility. And like, you know, they're probably going to have some growing pains in terms of, you know, the more concepts you run, obviously the less reps you have at them. And, uh, you know, we can talk a little bit more about like Jordan Hancock's role at nickel and, and how that continues to expand. And so, you know, he himself needs some reps, but I still think even if there's some, you know, some coverage busts in terms of implementing some of these schemes, like, being able to use cover four and, and some other of these split safety schemes that does it makes them less predictable by down and distance and less predictable by formation is a good thing. You know, the other thing you see them doing, um, you know, is, is they're disguising more. So like there's a couple of plays during this game where like Proctor would line up sort of as an underneath defender, similar to the first clip we saw. And then at the snap, he would drop very quickly deep and ransom would spin down into the hook curl zone. And so, you know, you see that kind of disguise, like on the first series, um, where they stopped Western Kentucky on third, third down, they ran a cover zero with two rats. And then on fourth down, they dropped into a Tampa two and you saw, you know, Western Kentucky ran a mesh concept, which, you know, we've talked about that a lot uh, for the Ohio State offense, but that's a, a play you run against man coverage. So obviously like Western Kentucky was expecting to get man coverage again. And instead, Ohio State fooled them with a zone and was able to, to make the stop. So again, that, that kind of goes to what we're talking about in terms of being able to, to change things up, change up the looks for the opposing quarterback. So you just don't know what's coming based on pre-snap uh, alignment. All right. And so the next one, this is one where the defense gets down off the field on third down, but they, uh, they didn't do it probably the way they were necessarily expecting. This is one where the receiver went out of bounds. And so. You had a loss of down penalty for uh, Western Kentucky, but you thought this was an interesting play, perhaps for some from different reasons other than just uh, the you know I don't I don't think the have them run out of bounds is going to be the part of the game plan that they're going to be able to carry forward uh, too reliably. So what else what else did you see on this one? Yeah, well as you know I've complained in the past uh, about the lack of uh, creepers or simulated pressures from Ohio State, and so when they run one, I have to give them credit. And again, I think this goes sort of part and parcel with what we were just talking about before in terms of. Ex the, the continued expansion of the scheme beyond just being sort of having to run what they were running before a lot of single high cover one with some cover three mixed in. And so here you have, you know, first of all, they're overloading or, or showing pre-snap that they're overloading uh, one side. And so Western Kentucky actually shifts their, uh, their slides, their line to the right where they think they have, you know, four, uh, they have, you know, two defensive linemen and the two linebackers. And so they slide that way and actually Ohio State drops off that side and brings uh, Styles and Ibnosen on a blitz to the field. And behind it, Ohio State runs what is in effect like a two deep with Denzel Burke as one of the deep safeties and a four under scheme. And so Proctor drops down. And so you've got, you know, Jack Sawyer and the two linebackers as the four under. So again, that's that's kind of what I've been discussing in terms of where they need to move to, particularly on passing downs in terms of, you know, causing uncertainty for the offensive line in terms of who they're picking up um, and, you know, causing uh, hesitancy for the quarterback when you do this. Um, you know, we talked about the last week when there was a lot of concern about, you know, pressure from the defensive ends. And I, I think that was certainly better this week. You saw from, you know, Sawyer and JT Tumalo, like the, the, the pressure numbers were, were much improved, but you're also going to make it easier on those guys and everyone else if you're not predictable where your four rushers are coming from all the time and that the offensive line knows where their landmarks are. So you, again, you, you're just going to help everyone out. You know, this again wasn't executed perfectly. Like, as you said, the, the reason this play didn't succeed is because Western Kentucky's receiver stepped out of bounds. You know, Jack Sawyer needs to get more depth or more, you know, width and get to the curl flat zone. Um, and so again, there's trade-offs, right? In terms of execution, the more volume you have, uh, the more you're probably opening yourself up to have having less reps, uh, and some bumps along the way. But I still think to get where they want to go offensively, this is sort of the path they need to follow. 
Well, last week we talked about the fact that Western Kentucky was not going to run the same type of offense as Notre Dame, but at least it was going to be more passing than Ohio State had seen. So it would prep, uh, prep the Buckeyes for uh, what they might see from Sam Hartman a little bit better than what they had gotten out of Youngstown State and Indiana before that. But one area where there was maybe a little bit of a closer parallel is, you know, Western Kentucky. They you you saw them run power a few times, and this is one of the this is one of the plays that where they did that. This next one, you thought this might be something you know useful to sort of in sort of forward looking way in terms of how, how, what Ohio State might have to do against the Irish this weekend. Yeah, I actually think Western Kentucky had some success with gap run schemes against Ohio State, and you know, I mean, you, again, you kind of. You can't defend it all, so you, you do have to play the pass. And so there are times where, like, you know, um, Tommy Eichenberg had to, like, on this play, he kind of triggers quicker. Sometimes he has to sit, though, because, like, when you watch this play, it has a backside RPO. And if, if you know, the quarterback could have thrown it and, and pulled and thrown this pass because he triggered down early. But, again, like, so, I, you know, you got your line to the field your passing strength, you got your run strength to the boundary by pulling the lineman, you're adding a gap, right? And so Ohio State needs to match that. You know, the steel chambers um, has to be more physical, taking on the pulling guard. And you know, Tyleek Williams, again, we talked about him earlier. I mean, he he makes a lot of plays and made a play here. And that will be obviously key against Notre Dame. Um, to, because if your defensive tackles can control the run game action, it can clean up for a lot of faults and let you sit back on the pass more. But like Notre Dame, you know, will they do have a very diverse run? Like they'll use a lot of zone schemes, they'll use gap schemes. You know, you'll see different types of power, different types of counter tray. They run duo, uh, they change gaps a lot. And so Ohio State's going to have to match that and be able to, to move with the gaps that Notre Dame's creating. And so Again, I think there were times against Western Kentucky that they struggle with that, either because the linebacker didn't get over the top to the other side, um, you know, the defensive ends didn't pinch down hard enough, or um, you know, didn't take or someone didn't take on a pulling guard um, with enough force in the hole. So, again, I think this is an issue to watch. I, I to me, Notre Dame's, um, you know, their spread offense. You'll get plenty of 12 personnel, but you'll, they'll also, you know, go four detached or three detached plenty. But either way, I think a lot of it starts with their run game. You know, I don't think that they, their passing game is super complex in terms of the, con the number of concepts they're using, but they definitely will, they use a lot of run concepts and they will, uh, and they use a lot of hard play action off of it too. So if you oversell it on the run, you know, you'll get a lot of bootlegs and, and Hartman's, uh, he's mobile. So he'll, you know, he'll be comfortable out of the pocket or hard play action, throwing a tight ends um, in the flats or, or on vertical routes. Well, one thing you saw a couple times from Ohio State last weekend was the Buckeyes scoring on one play drives. Well, they're not the only team that's going to be playing in, in South Bend this weekend. They can do that. Uh, Notre Dame had one uh, that you wanted to talk about. It was a one play 80 yard drive from the North Carolina State game a couple weeks ago. That was a long touchdown run by Audric Estime. Uh, Ohio State, obviously, uh, my professional advice would be they should not give up an 80-yard touchdown run, if, all, <laughs> if at all possible. So what do you see here on this play, and what does Ohio State need to do to not have this happen to them? Yeah, and again, so, you know, this is just a basic power run. So again, but you'll see Notre Dame uses different formations. Here they have a, an offset pullback and a pulling guard, but, like, you know, they'll use multiple tight ends. They'll pull different linemen, like they have a very, especially their offensive tackles are very skilled and good athletes. And so they like to pull them in different ways. You know, I've, I saw them run dart. I've seen them run a variety of counter trays. Uh, and so again, they're going to test whether your gap sound. And obviously North Carolina State was not on this play. And then it's exacerbated by their deep safety taking a poor angle. Um, and so obviously, you know, you need you, everyone on defense needs to flow to the ball. Um, because again, what a lot of what Notre Dame wants to do is build up that downhill gap scheme run game, and so obviously, you know, I mean, it's not dissimilar from what Michigan likes to do, and, and you know, we've seen Ohio State have various problems with that in the past in terms of matching gaps when they change, and so that'll definitely be a challenge. Again, I think, as I said, Notre Dame has a very good offensive line; they're very sound, um, particularly the tackle spot. So I think it really is a question of you know. Ty Lake Williams, Mike Paul, 
and Ty Hamilton inside, uh, can, can they control the line of scrimmage and then, you know, force Notre Dame, uh, to play behind the chains. All right. So that, that ends our sort of film breakdown look at this week. I did want to talk to you about something that Jim Knowles talked about on Tuesday. He was asked about the fact that it was really much more Jordan Hancock than Sonny Styles at that nickel safety spot last weekend against uh, Western Kentucky. And, you know, he was asked sort of, how do you balance that? And is that going to be true moving forward? And, you know, his answer was kind of, it depends. So, you know, how do you envision that position breaking down based on what you've seen from Hancock so far, what you've seen from Styles before? Because, you know, I think we came into the year, I, I at least came into the year thinking, I wonder how Styles will hold up in terms of covering those short little speedy slot guys. You know, and was that just based on the matchup last weekend? What, where do you see that, that positional, um, you know, the reps there breaking down for uh, games moving forward? Yeah. I mean, I think it, I, to echo Nose's point, I mean, I think it will be matchup dependent. So, you know, when Notre Dame's in two tight ends or heavier personnel, like I expect Styles to be on the field. And when they are in passing downs with three wide receivers, including a slot receiver on the field, like I expect Hancock to be on the field. So, I think it's much more NFL style matchups at those spots. Um, you know, I, I do think like, Styles does give you some flexibility to be able to occasionally hang with a spread out formation. But I do think like Jordan Hancock brings a, a, another dimension in terms of Ohio State being able to defend the pass. I mean, I think you can tell he's, he, um, is uh, it's still a work in progress in terms of him getting used to playing the slot? And I, you know, I, I just wonder how many reps he got in preseason at that spot because it seems like at one point their plan was to probably play Cam Martinez there in passing downs, and obviously, like that didn't work out the way they wanted to early against Youngstown State. Hancock came in, he played a bunch. I mean, it's it's great in cover one to have three corners on the field. I mean, I th- there are still some growing pains, sort of as I alluded to earlier with Hancock and handling, you know, handling motion, handling the zones. I mean, it's just different responsibilities at the nickel spot. Um, and so, you know, this will be a game where I, I would be surprised if this, the snaps between Hancock and Styles are 50-50 between the two of them, maybe 60-40 to Styles. So I, I do think it'll be game dependent, but I would essentially think of Styles as like, more of the Sam linebacker and, and Hancock is more of like you're bringing in a, a passing nickel uh, defender. And so, you know, each gives you, I think because of their talent, like they each give you a little bit of flexibility. Like, as I said, Styles is better in space than your traditional linebacker. And Hancock is more, is a pretty physical guy for a quarterback. So Ohio State has that benefit to them, but I would still look forward to, to break out, you know, based on responding to personnel groupings and down a distance. All right, I'm going to let you go on this. When you're watching the game on Saturday night, what is one thing you're looking for that would be, you know, something that people could look at and go, aha, this is a very, very good sign for the Ohio State defense? And what is one thing that you know, they might see that might be, you know, oh boy, this is a little bit of a red flag that this, you know, the, the very, uh, very impressive defensive stats so far this season might be not necessarily about to hold up against Notre Dame? Yeah, I mean, I, I would look at, like, uh, at Notre Dame's rushing success rate. You know, particularly on first down, like is Notre Dame able to stay ahead of the chains, uh, stay ahead of schedule? That really opens up, you know, some of the quick game concepts they like to use, the play action we referred to earlier. Uh, if they're behind schedule, uh, Hartman does like to hold the ball. And so, like, he will hold it. He'll, he'll, he likes to play off platform. And, like, you know, he'll have receivers at times that are open that he, like, he'd rather hold it and see what, what else he can, um, you know, generate through a, you know, broken plays or scrambling. And so I do think it'll provide opportunities in passing downs for Ohio State to create pressure, but they got to get there. You know, you don't want to be in a bunch of uh, third and ones, third and twos um, throughout the game. All right. Well, if you enjoy listening to Ross talk about football, I'm going to give you a little secret. We, we have started posting these shows a day or two early on our huddle board at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And the nice thing is not only do you get to watch it early and uh, get to, you know, Take a little extra time to watch it and learn from it. Ross is also there to talk to you on the board and answer your questions, as well as some of our other X's and O's guys. So if you have further questions, you don't have to just rely on me to ask them. You can ask them yourself. So, but here's the thing. You got to be a member of BuckeyeHuddle.com to do all of that stuff. So uh, why don't you consider signing up today? Got a lot of, uh, that's one of the many benefits of membership. 
Uh, we have uh, plenty of uh, recruiting coverage there as well, team coverage, all that good stuff. Very, uh, it's going to be a very, very active weekend on our message board, I'm guessing, one way or another, uh, as the Buckeyes get ready to take on Notre Dame. And uh, we will be there. Tony and Kevin and I are going to be there. We're going to have a whole bunch of coverage coming to you from South Bend. We're planning on a uh, Saturday or Friday afternoon live show uh, from Notre Dame's campus. Probably something Friday night. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Maybe something Saturday. There's going to be a whole lot to talk about. And so you're going to want to be on our YouTube channel as well, youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. If you are not subscribed, please, I am absolutely begging you, subscribe right now. Hit that bell so you get notified because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, from this weekend out in Notre Dame. And we're going to want you there as well. It's always more fun when we have uh, lots of people there interacting with us in the comments and all that good stuff. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed to Buckeye Huddle and get ready to enjoy what should be a really fun weekend of football, Buckeyes. And Notre Dame just one of, uh, I think, six ranked on ranked matchups this weekend. Going to be a heck of a weekend of college football. So I, I don't I don't know if I can speak for anyone else, but man, I cannot wait. All right, that will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Next time we see you, we'll be in South Bend. We'll talk to you then.